In this video, I'm going to show you how to solve equations that involve logarithms. Now, in order to, for you to do this, you're going to use the log laws. Two situations can arise. First, you can get a single log on each side, but then make sure that there is no coefficient in the front of the log, and you can do this by using your power law to move the coefficient to the exponent. The second situation is you can get a single log on one side and then a constant number on the other side. Now, if there is a single log on each side, you can now remove the log and then solve for x. Otherwise, if you have a single log on one side and a constant number on the other side, you're going to rewrite the equation in exponential form. Now, it seems like there's a lot of steps, but I'll show you in the example how to do both of these situations. Now, after you've solved for x, always check for extraneous roots by substituting your solution back into the original equation, always the original, and then determining whether all the logarithms are defined. You could also check your solution with a restriction so that you can see if it satisfies the restriction as well. Let's take a look at a couple of examples. So here, I've asked you to solve for x. In the first situation, we have two logs and a constant number. So we're going to move the logs to one side. So this will be log x with a base of 5 minus log 2 with a base of 5, and that equals to 1. So what we're going to do is we're going to get a single log on the left side by using my division rule. So that's going to be x divided by 2 because we are subtracting our logs. So that equals to 1. And then in this situation, I'm going to rewrite this in exponential form. So this will be 5 to the power of 1 equals x over 2. Or you can say that x over 2 is equal to 5 to the power of 1. So this is nice now. We just have to multiply both sides by 2. So then x is equal to 10. So we're going to check, and we can see that a restriction for here is that x has to be greater than 0. And this satisfies, our solution satisfies that. So x equals 10 is our solution. Let's take a look at the second one. So in the second um, equation, we have a log for every single term. So what we're going to do is we're going to combine the logs on the left and combine the logs on the right. And both of them are adding, so we're going to multiply. So we have x squared plus 11x equals log 6x plus 6. So we have a log on both sides, so that means if we're logging this number, and that equals a log of this, should say, expression, then therefore these ex two expressions must be equal. So we're going to remove the log. We don't really, we're not dividing by log. Remember, log is not a number. But we're just saying that because the logs are the equal, then these two expressions where we are logging are equal as well. So we're going to move all the terms to one side. And you can see we have a quadratic. And this quadratic we can factor. So this will be x plus 6 times x minus 1 equals 0. So x equals negative 6 and 1. All right, so checking my restrictions for this part here, I have x has to be greater than negative 11. Here I have x has to be greater than 0. In this last part here, I have x is greater than negative 1. All right, now out of these three, the x is greater than 0 is the most restrictive um, restriction, I guess you'd say, because it has the least amount of numbers. So, taking a look at my two solutions, negative 6 does not satisfy this restriction. So, therefore, x equals negative 6 is extraneous. And then my only solution, therefore, is x is equal to 1. Now, you can also just check by plugging the values in. So if I take negative 6 and substitute in here, I get 5, and that's okay. If I take negative 6 and substitute in here, I get log negative 6, and that is not okay. So that doesn't work. And you can also check that negative 6 plugged into this third log, I get negative 5. And again, you cannot log a negative number, so we can see that negative 6 doesn't work. When you plug in 1, 
you'll see that it works for all of the terms. Now, don't go by um, the don't go by using just say that x is a negative number, then it doesn't work. Make sure that you actually check your restriction or you take your solution and you substitute it in to see if, if it works. Okay, next we're gonna take a look at a problem. So we'll take a look at a compound interest question. So you invest $200 at 4% per annum, which just means that it's 4% um, per year. That's how we state uh, percentages. And it's compounded semi-annually. How many years will it take to triple your investment? So we're going to use the formula, A is equal to P bracket, so times 1 plus R divided by N, all to the power of N times T. So we start off with $200, so that's going to be our principal. 1 plus our interest rate is 0 0.04, and we're compounding it semi-annually, which means that N is equal to 2. So two in the top here. And then we want to know how many years. So we don't know that. So this is going to be two times T. And we want it to triple, which means that we started with $200. Now we want $600. So this will be 600 over here. Now, if it doesn't tell you the amount of investment, you could also just use one and three. And it'll actually still be the same um, answer, actually. So the first thing, let's divide both sides by 200 so we don't have this coefficient in the front. So we get 3 is equal to, and then inside here, let's simplify that. So 1 plus 0 0.04 divided by 2 is going to be 1.02, and this is to the power of 2t. So in this question, because the variable is an exponent, we need to use logs to solve. So what we're going to do is we're going to log both sides. So I'm going to put log 3 equals log 1.02 to the power of 2t. Now the reason that we're logging is because our variable is an exponent, we want to move it to the base. We want to move it to the bottom. So when we use our log on both sides, we can now use our power law to move the 2t to the front. So now we have log 3 equals 2 times t times log 1.02. And then we're going to divide both sides by 2 times the log 1.02 to isolate the t. So t is equal to log 3 divided by 2 times log 1.02. And when you plug this into your calculator, you're going to get 27.74. And this will be in years. So remember that. Uh, when you use your calculator to put brackets around the denominator so that you know that it's going to be divided by the 2 and the log 1.02. Let's take a look at one more example. So here we have a growth and decay problem. So a fossil contains 60 milligrams of carbon-14. So the bone originally contained 170 milligrams of carbon-14. So how old is a fossil? if the half-life of carbon-14 is 5,700 years. Okay, so this time we're going to use the formula A equals A naught times X to the power of T over T. So the 60 milligrams, that stands for our, our initial amount, A naught. The 170 grams stands for our final amount, so that's going to be A. Our half-life is our X. And our 5700 is our big T because it's associated with our half-life. So this will be 170 equals 60 times a half to the power of T over 5700. Now, the 60 cannot be multiplied by the half because um, this is the half is raised to the exponent, whereas the 60 is not. So the first thing we need to do is divide both sides. Oh, you know what? I just realized that we have this reverse. So this is actually a good little mistake to show you. So this says that the fossil contains 60 milligrams, but the bone originally contained. So the originally means that this has to be our A naught, and this actually is our A. All right, so I'm going to put the 170 over here and the 60 over there. All right, my mistake.
So we're going to divide both sides by 170. So same reason we can't multiply the 170 in. So we get 60 divided by 170 equals a half to the power of t over 5700. So again, our variables and the exponents, we're going to log both sides. And at the same time, I'm actually going to reduce this. So I'm going to put this as 6 over 17 by canceling off the zeros. And I will have log half to the power of t over 5700. And then we're going to move that exponent to the front. So I don't want you to use a calculator until everything is all set up so that we don't have any rounding issues at the end. Multiply both sides by 5700. And then our last step is to divide by log half. So t is equal to 5700 times log 6 over 17. All of this is divided by log a half. And then you're going to type this into your calculator, and you're going to see that this is going to be 8,564.25 years old. Okay, And then you can plug it in just to make sure that when you plug this value in for t here, that when you solve the right side, you will actually get 16.